Okay, before we jump into all of the details here of getting TTD working with Binary Ninja, I just wanted to show you why you might actually care. So um, here I have a trace, I've got Binary Ninja open. It's just, I just recorded a trace of using the ping utility. So I really don't even care and I won't care for the majority of the series about the actual program. We're not gonna do any real analysis. It's about the technology. Um, you can see everything's loaded up. We're gonna go through all the details throughout the series. Uh, but normally when we're debugging, as you can see up in the upper hand corner, Corner here, here's all of our debug icons and shortcuts. Um, we just step through in a linear fashion each instruction at a time. Well, with TTD now, we can step backwards. So you can see we're able to go backwards in the trace. So it's this forwards and backwards that while it has its limitations, it also has a lot of very powerful and capable features. So, okay, so let's get started here and uh, get TTD working in Binary Ninja. Okay, so first things first, we need to have a copy of Binary Ninja. Now, um, as I do with many of my videos, I'm using the free versions. That way there's no paywall that you're going to hit. Uh, this series is going to be no different. I'm going to be using the free version of Binary Ninja, which means there are going to be some limitations that we'll talk about throughout this series. Uh, you can find a copy of the free version here from binary.ninja slash free. All right, for the rest of the series, actually, we're just able to follow along with the documentation. So if you'd like to pull up the documentation to have as an extra resource, or maybe you say, hey, I really don't wanna to listen to you or watch your videos, so I'm gonna just follow the docs anyway, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, these are, this is a great documentation here, and we're gonna go through these in order to uh, get TTD and Windabug and everything that we need working in Binary Ninja. Um, so first up, we're gonna install Windabug. And the, uh, the first, this is where we come into really our first challenge with using the free version. Um, if you had a paid license, you have this, this kind of enticing word here, automatically, install Windabug automatically. And this would actually be done very simply by opening Binary Ninja and clicking on this install Windabug TTD option under uh, the uh, debugger menu. So that'd be really cool. Um, instead though, we're gonna go through the installation here, install Windabug manually, and, and you'll find while there are a few bullets here, uh, gonna be very simple. So that's the focus of this video. The next video then, we'll talk about recording a trace. Uh, we'll be able to do that right in Binary Ninja as well as I'll talk about uh, recording a trace outside of Binary Ninja using Windabug and some of the utilities that it comes with. And then finally, we'll load the trace up into our Binary Ninja and go through the trace. So that's what you have to look forward to here in this series. All right, well, let's get started here. Uh, the first steps, and we're gonna go through uh, installing Windabug with these instructions. Um, if you just take a moment here and, and go maybe go to a search engine and look at how can I install Windabug, you'll see there's actually a number of different ways that you can install Windabug. If you're using the Flare VM like I'm using, you actually already have Windabug, well, I guess you gotta type it right. Uh, you've already got Windabug installed. And so there are a number of paths to get you there. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, um, I guess, some challenges that you might run into uh, and why we're just gonna go ahead and, and go through this route here. So um, let's grab this first link. We're gonna download this. Um, I'm just gonna use the browser so we can open up a new tab here. So we'll go ahead, paste that in, hit enter download to our, uh, I think I've got this in the downloads folder, just the default. Yep, that's fine. Uh, and let's go ahead, we'll dock this to the side. Maybe this will be an easier way to work through these steps here. All right, so this app installer, this is actually just some XML. So we can open this with a text editor and you'll see, oh yeah, lots of updates and other, I'm surprised the ads haven't showed up down here. I guess maybe that's something that's coming. Um, you'll see that uh, what the instructions are having us do is to grab this next URL out of here. And this is the URL with the, um, the resource that ends with MSIX bundle. Okay, so we'll go back to browser here. We'll just start that download. I'll close that tab and then we'll open up this. And here are the instructions to download the MSIX bundle. Okay, uh, the next step here, and it says this can take a little while, uh, so it might want to give the download just a, a few minutes here. You can see I've kind of zipped ahead, and uh, the reason why, well, it's a 650 meg file. So yeah, it might take a, a few seconds, a minute or two, depending on where you're located and your connection. Um, once that's done, this bundle is just another zip archive. And so what we can do with that, and what the instructions tell us to do, is we really just need to extract um, this next bundle out of it. So let's go ahead, we will right click. We're in the Flare VM, so we've already got 7-zip available through the context menu. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna select extract files dot dot dot, B 
because I want to uh, tell 7-Zip to create a directory. If I just right click and say extract here, then it treats this current folder as the root. And if there's a lot of files there, it can get kind of crowded and hard to organize. So uh, let's go ahead and extract the files. We'll open up this folder. You can see we are looking for this file, windebug underscore win dash x64 dot msix. And here it is right here. So again, right click 7-zip. I'm going to say extract files. And in this case, I want to go back a directory. Now oh, I didn't want to delete all that. So I'm just going to do this the lazy way and try that again. I wanted to just remove the window bug and I want to create this folder off of that downloads folder. Okay, so we'll click OK. Give this a few seconds here to extract. In the meantime, we'll go back a directory and uh, here's the folder now that contains all of that extracted content. You can see there's there's quite a bit here. Um, inside of this folder, it's saying that we're looking for the debug engine DLLs, so really the core of WinDebug, and where we're going to find the ability to get time travel debugging. So we're looking for an AMD64 folder. It's located right here at the top. Let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit, make this a little bit larger. Large icons, sure, that looks terrible, but let's go with it. Um, AMD 64, and uh, oh, now I gotta do it again anyway, so that's fine. Um, and we're looking for dbgeng.dll. So here it is, dbgeng.dll. Now, what we want to do, we can highlight in the URL bar here, I'm gonna grab this path, because now what the instructions are directing us to do is to open up Binary Ninja, uh, go to the settings, and go edit settings. Okay, so, Let's get Binary Ninja open. Okay, here you can see, uh, welcome to the free version. So you know that I am on the free version. Uh, we'll go edit, settings, and then type in uh, debugger. And that can just take a couple of moments before it picks up. Okay, and right here, x64 debug engine installation. This is the path that we're looking for. You can see I've actually already got that path located or, or pasted in there. And uh, once we do that, we can just close this file. Now, I've observed that with this installation, we can actually close Binary Ninja and we can open it again. And if there are any troubles in the location that is finding those, those debug DLLs and the, really the engine that it needs from WinDebug, you'll have output here on the console. So look, seeing that there isn't any, uh, that's a pretty good sign. Uh, what does it look like though when there is trouble? Well, let's do this. Um, so we're going to find that installation under Program Files, and down here under Windows Apps, you'll see the long list of different folders, but if you uh, navigate down to Microsoft WinDebug version underscore x64, uh, this folder structure should look familiar. And here we have the AMD64 folder and the dbgeng.dll. Uh, so let's go ahead, we'll highlight this, we'll paste it in, I'm going to open up Binary Ninja, and we'll start, go back to our settings page, look for our debugger, and then we'll just simply uh, update that path value. So now we can close, uh, we can just close Binary Ninja. Um, this relaunch will allow that change to take effect. Uh, and you can see here, we've got some error messages about failing to load uh, dbghelp.dll, error five. Uh, I imagine if I dug into it, it'd all be related to uh, permission errors. But, um, you know, again, the uh, go, sticking to the documentation just to help hopefully reduce a little bit of friction there. And also, uh, I guess, because uh, I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> so um, we can just go back now and, and update that. So we'll go back to the settings tab, uh, go to the debugger settings. And uh, we'll just go back in our history here until I get to the, well, I guess I could just go to downloads because that's where I installed it under the Win X64. And there we go. So now we can grab this path, uh, paste that back in, and we can restart Binary Ninja one last time just to confirm that the changes uh, in this case have, have taken effect. And yeah, we have no errors. So it looks like we're good to go there. Again, just showing you some different options and, and what an error might look like if there's problems with loading the entire debug engine. Again, I suspect there were some permission things there, but uh, copying either copying those files out 
from the already installed location if you went ahead and installed WinDebug, messing with permissions or going actually through the documentation as we've done here in this video um, and just downloading the appropriate files, parking it somewhere in your file system that you can point Binary Ninja to um, and now we're good to go. So uh, what's up next? Well, let's go ahead and we'll record a TTD trace. Uh, probably gonna look at this from two different perspectives, recording a trace with Binary Ninja and then recording a trace with the um, time travel debug utilities a la the command line. So a couple of videos there. Uh, for that up, up next and then once we're done uh, and this is going to be the like the coolest part of this whole series uh, we'll load the trace into binary ninja so that we can use the trace uh, basically in the ui and, and step backwards and forwards just like i started this video off with so uh, stay tuned as we get into the next steps here in the installation and working with time travel debugging in binary ninja